All right, this video is about TIG welding titanium, a simple butt joint and a purge fixture. 040 thick, that's one millimeter thick. I ran into some argon shielding issues, and I'm kind of glad I did because it, it brings up that subject that we can talk about and show what happens when you don't have pure argon. I had a bad cylinder of argon, so I'll bring you along through all that. I'll show you some previous clips of some stainless steel welds where I thought it was kind of iffy, but it was okay for stainless. Then when I welded titanium, it reared its ugly head. So let's do it. The very first thing I'm going to do here is give it a wipe down with acetone to get rid of any residual oil on it. And after that, I'm going to use a nice, clean, dedicated stainless steel wire brush, a wire wheel brush. And that's something that has only been used on titanium or is brand new. You don't want to contaminate or cross-contaminate. And next thing is a nice, clean file, again, dedicated for titanium. You don't want to embed carbon steel or stainless steel particles in titanium, they'll cause cracking later on. So it's a good idea to, to dedicate your tools, segregate them, use it only for titanium files, wire brushes, etc. So after the back side, after the sheared edge is filed there, I'm now hooking up the argon to this purge fixture. And uh, this is something that's a very crude fixture, but it works. I whipped this out in about a day, several years ago, to start testing welders. And so it kind of became scrap when we got when we got newer fixtures, newer and better ones made by the machine shop, but still works. Provides backing gas to the backside and holds holds the parts down. I want to be using about 35 to 40 CFH with this dual flow meter from Flame Tech on the cup because I'm using a pretty large cup. And now I'm going to be only be using about 10 to 15 on the fixture, and that should be pretty close. I'm also going to wipe down the filler wire. I do this on stainless steel and aluminum as well. It's always a good idea. Be surprised at what's on that stuff. But this was really filthy. It's been kind of in my basement here for a long time. And titanium's less tolerant than other metals on that. Post flow on the gas, you're going to run higher than you would on stainless or anything else. I'm maxing this thing out at 20 seconds. And occasionally I'll even bump the pedal to kick in a whole nother post flow cycle depending on depending on what I'm welding. Now this is your standard torch that comes with most 200 amp machines. Nothing wrong with them. They work fine. Not going to get it for titanium. So not only is it kind of long with that long back cap and the long cup, but it's just not not enough shielding for welding titanium unless you're just going to do a just a tack or something. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take all this stuff off and I'm going to put on stubby gas lens hardware. This is a 17 air-cooled torch, and so the, the stubby kit will allow me to use these small style cups, gas lens cups like this, and this is what I use for welding most anything. Carbon steel, stainless steel, aluminum, it's my go-to setup. But now I'm going to weld titanium. I need a much larger cup, and I'm going to use this BBW cup. It's roughly uh, an inch on the inside diameter. And all I got to do once I put the stubby hardware on is just swap cups now. It's threaded. This is a ceramic style with threads. They also have the uh, Pyrex or clear quartz style. But I really like this one. And uh, an inch inside diameter. That means it's a number 16 cup. And I can extend the electrode about an inch too. And that's going to that's gonna do me okay for welding this joint here. There are times when you might need even a larger trailing shield. Or, or something like that, but for, for the, this thin joint with this chill block fixture, it should be okay, except for when it's not. And I notice that right now I've got problems, okay? So you notice that discoloration right there? That should be silver. I shouldn't have that rainbow halo discoloration there, so something's messed up, and I've got to start checking on stuff now. Now, it could be the fixture gas blowing out, creating turbulence in the torch gas, so I've decided to weld the other end tack the other end as well just to kind of see if it was doing the same thing after I turn the fixture gas down just a little bit and I'm still having problems. Still discoloration there when it, where it should be silver. So I decided well let me, let me weld just a little bit here where the, the, fixture, the fixture backing gas isn't blowing and fighting against the torch gas and you can see I've got discoloration there about a half inch from the bead. The bead is looking not too bad as far as discoloration goes, but still not silver. Still, the beads straw, and I've got purple and gray weeping in there. It's not. It's not good. I've, I've used this cup plenty of times. It should be silver, so I know I've got some issues going on. So that's where I start checking for leaks and all kinds of things like that.
I remember using this same cylinder of argon a few weeks ago for a video TIG welding stainless steel. I had backing gas going as well as torch gas and it, it seemed just a little off. Like it was doing okay on the stainless, but I noticed it's like, why is this not just completely silver? It should be. I've got a, I've got a chill block on the back side, but again, you can see some discoloration next to the weld there and a little bit on the bead. So, but I, I went with it. It was so it was good enough for stainless. I wish it was a little bit better, but here on titanium, it's really showing that I've got a problem. So that's when I decided to swap tanks out after I got a test piece out and just spot tacked a bunch of times checking different flow rates and things like that and I always keep a piece like this around a piece of scrap titanium can tell you a lot so these little puddles these little molten puddles are silver but there's just discoloration everywhere and then when I ran that one inch I got a pretty good looking silver to straw colored bead but then discoloration but here's the back side and I've got discoloration there too on the back side where the shielding gas was coming and so I know now that I've got a problem with the tank, or at least that's what I suspected. So I swapped tanks over, didn't change anything from where I left off. So I've got about 35 to 40 CFH going on the cup. I've got about 10 CFH going on the fixture. And uh, now all of a sudden, things are much better. I have a suspicion that the owner's size tanks, the 125 cubic foot tanks, have more quality issues than the rental full-size cylinders. That's just a suspicion. I just don't think they, they vacuum them out maybe as often as they do the other ones. I'm not really sure. But when I've had problems, it seems to be on the smaller tanks. But this is going way better. Now the procedures and the, and the cleanliness and all that stuff is way more important on titanium, but the technique itself is very similar to just TIG welding stainless steel. You know, you just kind of move along. You keep that you keep that hot tip of the rod shielded with argon, which in this case is pretty easy to do with that large cup. Show you slow motion me running into that large tack right there. That's why I put an extra dab or two on the ends. It's just a lot easier to melt into and not blow away an end. And if you needed to grind that off after the fact, that's easier to grind off than it is to fill in a, a hole that you where you blew the whole end away, which sometimes is easy to do on, on thin stuff. You go right up to the end and you know, you don't get off the pedal quick enough, and next thing you know, you got a quarter inch scooped out area that you got to re weld. So now I'm going to start on this tack, and I'll show you a slow motion there too. Again, you can see the reason why it's nice to have a little extra metal on those tacks on the end. I start just inside the tack, and I watch the rear of the puddle, and I watch it run halfway into that tack, and then I take off. Now I'm not full pedal for the first two or three dips, and then I'm full pedal. So here I'm 37 amps full pedal. Now, it depends on how you have the machine set up. A lot of guys don't ever like to go full pedal. They just go by feel. But, you know, for the sake of this video, I wanted to know the exact amperage that, that seemed to work really well. So I played around until I settled on 37 amps and went full pedal with it. And it was just about right for this 40 thousandths thick titanium. So how much discoloration is allowed on titanium? That's a question. Um, it depends. You know, some welding codes and some, uh, some aircraft overhaul manuals and things like that don't allow any discoloration, but other codes will allow some. Straw colored, for instance, uh, a, lot of, a lot of times you're allowed to go straw colored and sometimes even blue or purple. It just depends on the class of the weld, the criticality of the application, etc., etc. But it's worse if you weld something inside a chamber and it's purple, you got problems. If you weld it in a fixture, you might have problems. Best case, best case scenario is just don't discolor it at all. Keep the bead silver, and then usually you'll be okay. The thing about titanium is it's got great properties, but you can screw those properties up by welding, you know, without backing gas or using the wrong filler wire. Uh, the worst thing you can do is use like a, accidentally use a stainless filler wire or something like that on it. Then you got basically something as brittle as glass. So your shielding requirements on titanium are greater than, than they are on stainless steel. So you need to shield the backside with purge gas. I did that using a dual flow meter today and a purge fixture. The front side, usually you'll shield it with a larger cup than you would use for stainless. Sometimes even a trailing shield. We'll talk about all these things and more in future episodes. We'll talk about trailing shields, purge monitors. You know, if I had a purge monitor today, I could have very quickly determined that my gas wasn't up to snuff. It was good enough for stainless, 
not good enough for titanium. So leave your comments on things you'd like me to cover on titanium in the comments. I'll try to get to them. Might take me a few weeks to, to bang this series out, but I do have some, some other shapes. Uh, also, I'll be talking to a friend of mine who builds bicycle frames, and he does titanium frames as well, and uh, it should be interesting. So thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. If you'd like to learn more about the dual flow meter or the large uh, ceramic BBW cup that I use for this video, just go to weldmonger.com. That's my online store. I appreciate it very much.